Hello and welcome to The Trials, the system playtest podcast from the RPG Academy. I am Michael and this is The Trial of Shadows of the Demon Lord, episode number one, Bring in the Thunder. In this, our first actual play episode, we sit down with Nat, who has been one of the alpha playtesters of the new game, Shadows of the Demon Lord, that is being released through Kickstarter by Schwab Entertainment which was founded by Robert J. Schwab. If you're not sure who he is, pick up a random RPG book on your shelf. If it's a good book, his name's probably on it somewhere. He has a very long list, a healthy pedigree of being involved with uh, games and supplements that were for various RPGs. Most recently, he was on the development team for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Uh, We had a lot of fun with this game, and hopefully you guys will have a lot of fun listening to our exploits. So here is The Trials of Shadows of the Demon Lord, episode number one, Bring in the Thunder. Uh, We are going to run an adventure uh, that I actually just cooked up recently, so this is going to be my inaugural run through of this. It's called The Mirrors of Mistarmaclose. It is written for uh, novice characters, which you guys are. So as level one characters, um, you guys have already gone through some sort of adventure together, right? Like we were talking about earlier, um, at level zero, you were just regular, you know, halflings and humans and Jotuns and whatever, um, sort of reacting to the world around you, um, dealing with some sort of terrible threat that came up, you managed to deal with it, and then for whatever stupid reason you decided that becoming adventurers was the path you were going to go down. So you guys have been through the fire together. And as uh, novice adventurers, you have set out pretty much looking for trouble, and your travels have brought you to a small coastal town. Um, it's called Baz, B-A-Z, and you have just reached this town of Baz, uh, traveling along uh, one of the King's Roads um, as night has fallen. Um, it's a town that's up the coast a little ways, um, and just south of this town is a, uh, a thick forest, but uh, beyond the forest is sort of a rocky promontory on which stands a famous lighthouse, that's the Lighthouse of Boz, uh, which is well known to sailors and merchants and that sort of thing, um, sort of a major landmark in this part of the world. But as you have uh, sort of started to uh, take your rest in uh, the little inn in Boz, um, you are hearing murmurings from the people. They are very concerned because the famous Lighthouse of Boz has gone out. And that is where we'll begin. Fantastic. Well, I really wanted to climb up that to pee off the side anyways, so I was already ready to go. (laughs) But I see no reason to go at the moment while I'm enjoying this fine ale as I uh, snatch another one off of a servant girl's tray. Ah, I don't know. might be scary up there. Dark. The dark is scary. Uh, Well, good thing I can uh, create fire, so uh, I think we'll... Ah, uh... fire is scary. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I, I will I will pat the little goblin on the head, pretty much knocking him over completely. <laughs> Don't worry, little one. I'll keep you in my backpack. You better. That's where I live. I keep all my things in there. You're the best horse I've ever had. But I, I keep telling you, I'm not a horse. I'm I'm a Jotun. I'm I'm a person. I'm silly Jotun horse. I'm, <sighs> I Eat give your up. Oats. Yep. I'm not going through this again. Someone get me a sandwich. <laughs> this jackass <laughs> keeps trying to feed me hay. <laughs> so the uh, the serving woman actually overhears your request for a sandwich, and she kind of uh, leans in and she says, uh, I can get you a sandwich, but before I do, let me ask you, you have the look of adventurers about you. Is, am I right in making that assumption? It depends on the quality of sandwiches. <laughs> If I were to make you the most delicious mutton sandwich you have ever tasted, what would your answer be? Wait, wait a second. What type of mutton? Well, we have uh, we have sheep that we bring down uh, from some of the farmland to the northeast of here. It's very, very fine. We don't we don't get it ourselves. We're mostly fisher folk here, living on the coast as we do. Uh, but we have many friends in the farms to the east. Is the mutton sliced real thin? Oh yeah, real thin with a little uh, lettuce and tomato thrown on there. Then, then I'm I'm your man, darling. Bring that sandwich <laughs> in. 
All right, one sandwich. Anything for the rest of you gentlemen? I will look at her salaciously and say, I'm really more of a breast and thigh man myself. You got anything for me? Um, I cuff him across the face. <laughs> I apologize for my friend. I duck because I know it's coming. <laughs> yeah, she uh, a a look of distaste crosses her features briefly, but then she sort of puts her professional mask down again and says, uh, I can get you some chicken if that's what you desire. That's what I said, wasn't it? Not understanding the, the double entendre that's been put forward, I say, Ah, I'd like my meat with bones in it. Do you have anything with bones in it, honey? Ah! Uh, I suppose so. I can find you something. Uh... The crunchier, the better. Ah! Hmm. Well, in that case, actually, you'll probably love our fish. I normally don't serve it to travelers. It's sort of an accustomed taste, but uh, the fish that we take out of the sea is very bony. Oh, delightful. Thank you, thank you. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, my uh, I'll have like a ball of uh, fire that I've conjured, and I'm just like tossing it like a uh, tennis ball. I was like, no food for me. I'll just have another ale, and I'll toss Nobaz the, the ball of fire, and it just kind of, you know, evaporates as it hits him. <laughs> so she says, uh, yeah, ab- about the ale... Um, and you, you know that even as you were drinking it, there is something that tasted a little off about it. And she says, uh, I, I don't know if you have ever passed through the town of Boz before, um, but I, I should tell you, alcohol is actually forbidden in our town. So we have ale, but it's, uh, it's special. It's non-alcoholic. I do a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I dump the ale on the floor. None for me. <laughs> he says, yeah, I- that's usually the reaction people have when I tell them that. I, I do believe this ale was made by the High Lord of Odul. <laughs> I have sampled his I have sampled his fine brew many a time, and I shall willingly consume it, along with that sandwich which I'm still waiting for. Excellent. Well let me get your food for you. Uh, I will uh, bring ales to those who want them. Um, same goes for our wine, our spirits, anything like that. It's all extra special and tastes a little different, so You'll have your choice, but just keep that in mind. Uh, but let me go get that food for you. I'll be back in a moment. And she kind of heads back, uh, goes behind the bar and through a back door out to the kitchen. And after a few minutes, she comes back with your food. Uh, the mutton sandwich is delicious. Uh, the chicken leaves something to be desired. Uh, you think it was probably grown uh, or bred locally um, and is probably just as crummy as everything else in this crummy town. Um, and the fish, if you like terrible fish without much meat and a lot of tiny little bones that get stuck in your teeth, then this is like the greatest delicacy you have ever tasted. Ah, so crunchy. Mmm. Love the eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the eyeballs kind of like pop in your mouth when you bite down on them, and the salty ooze kind of seeps out. It's delicious. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, so, uh, so I'll eat my sandwich. I'll, I will greatly uh, enjoy it and relish it. After a couple bites, I will uh, turn to the serving wench and say, mm, this, is, this is definitely the best sandwich I've ever had. So, so ap- appease my curiosity. Why does the serving wench have a job for adventurers? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I'm very, very worried about the lighthouse situation. Everyone in town is, obviously. Uh, you know, We depend on the lighthouse for any of our fisher folk who may be caught out late flying the coast, um, you know, helps them come home safely. Uh, But as well, um, we rely on it for merchants to be able to come in. um, And what little trade our town sees is enabled by the lighthouse. But I will admit, since you asked, that I actually have a personal interest in the matter as well. The reason for that is that the lighthouse keeper, Mr. McClose, is actually my grandfather. And I'm very worried that something has happened to him it's been a week since the lighthouse went out. None of us are brave enough to go through the forest to get there and, and see what happened, but I'm very worried that something may have happened to him. Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll turn to my compatriots and give them all a, a knowing glimpse and uh, get their take on the situation. Sounds like an opportunity to get into adventuring to me. I'm busy having mouth sex with my chicken. <laughs> it's good, but it's not that good. 
I, I um, looked back at you with three eyes, one unsquished in my mouth, and, and, and through uh, middled bits of bone chunks that fly out of my sharpened teeth, they say, ah, I, you know, my, my experience in sailing tells me that it's a terrifying thing to sail without a light. Many a ships get shipwrecked by goblin sailors, and uh, during the, such circumstances, that would be a tragedy, a terrible crime. Ah. Yeah, and the uh, the innkeep actually says, uh, yes, and in fact, in the last week since the lighthouse has gone out, we've had numerous shipwrecks on the rocks out there. None of us have been able to go investigate, of course, because we can't make it through the forest, but we can hear them and we can we can see the damage and bits of flotsam and jetsam floating up along the coast. The uh, idea of flotsam and jetsam and the valuables that may uh, contain therein cause my, my little goblin eyes to slit open into big round dollar-shaped circles. Ooh. Yeah, 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 we can investigate. We can do it. You can do it. We can do it. I'll take my horse there immediately. I start hitting the joke. <laughs> Stop it. I, I pick you up by your feet and put you head first down into the backpack. <laughs> Who turned out the lights? What happened? <laughs> just leave him for a second. He'll go to sleep. This is, this is what we have to do every day. It just has to get really dark. That's how you put him down. Yeah. Sometimes we put a blanket over him. Sometimes I just stuff him in the bag. I mean, it's whatever's easy. <laughs> so, if uh, if we're going to go to this lighthouse and investigate, which I certainly am interested, purely based on the culinary quality of this excellent sandwich, Thank uh, you. would there be any sort of monetary reward for our activity? Or non-monetary? I give her a wink. I hit him again. <laughs> yeah, that, that same look of distaste just briefly crosses her face. And she says, uh, well, as you can see, we're not very wealthy in this town, but uh, certainly as many sandwiches as you can eat, uh, you can stay at the inn for free, and I suppose if you, if you were to come across any valuables during your travels, certainly you could lay claim to them. Darling, you had me at free sandwiches. Let's go. What time of day is it? Yeah, so it's uh, probably about 8 or 9 at night. You're certainly welcome to head out. Um, she would probably caution against it. Um, she definitely wants to reiterate that uh, the forest is considered pretty dangerous. Yeah, clearly she just wants me to spend the night. I, I get it. I'm, I'm picking up what she's throwing down. I absolutely vote for going in the morning for safety. I'm already asleep. <laughs> <laughs> my, my backpack is snoring. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so we will uh, we will eat and drink a little bit more. Um, we will accept the innkeeper's offer of a free room and board, okay. and uh, unless anything happens during the night, we will set off at first light. All right, so you pass the night uneventfully, then sleeping pretty well in relatively comfortable beds. Um, this lady definitely keeps a nice in, and you wake up in the morning feeling peppy and refreshed. Uh, pull yourself out of the Jotun's backpack and stretch and crack your neck and all that stuff. Um, and you are feeling full of vim and vigor and ready for adventure. Uh, I will make a point to check my equipment and backpack, uh, make sure okay. I have my weapons, nothing's gone missing, uh, <laughs> got my rope, <laughs> my morning star, all my basic stuff. Make sure everything is still there. Aside from some droppings, it's fine. Well, I'm used to those, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, so would my historian profession let me know any information about this uh, famous lighthouse? Yeah, absolutely. So um, give me an intellect roll um, with one boon. So it'll be d20 plus a d6 plus your intellect modifier. 11, uh, 10. So 10 is the target number, so you hit a square in the nose. Um, so yeah, you, you have heard of the Lighthouse of Boz. And the one thing that uh, people always say about it is that it's kept by this kind of kooky old wizard, Mr. Miklos, um, who is uh, the grandfather of the innkeeper. And rumor has it that the lighthouse itself is actually magical, um, that it's somehow powered by some sort of system of magic. And just uh, to correct myself here, because I forgot, there was mm -hmm. a horrible, deadly forest in between us and the lighthouse. Yes, well, what, what has been pitched to you, at least, as a horrible, deadly forest, but certainly one that uh, the townsfolk are afraid to venture through. So in this world, afraid and smart, or no, smart enough are kind of synonymous, so just keep that in mind. 
<laughs> and this might be uh, going backwards a little bit, but it, the previous night before we went to sleep, um, mm -hmm. could we have actually chatted up some of the locals about the forest and maybe gotten some of their different stories? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, <clears throat> so they generally, uh, the word is um, that the forest is infested with kobolds, which are, in this world, they're sort of like little halfling-sized humanoids uh, from the family of beast men. So they're like little halflings, but with like rat or possum heads. And so there's a, a known kobold infestation in the forest, and then there are rumors as well of, uh, of unquiet dead um, being disturbed. Old, old bodies that were buried there probably before the forest even grew up, um, having... Uh, come back to life and, and walking about and that sort of thing. Um, but as many people dismiss those as rumors and old wives' tales as insist that it's factually true and their cousin's best friend's cousin saw something out there. But every, everybody agrees that the forest is dangerous and everybody agrees that whatever makes it dangerous has been getting worse recently. Okay, before we head off in the morning, I actually want to use my augur divination spell. Okay, sure. Um, so basically this is some fortune telling. Uh, so we go down to breakfast. I have another two or three of those mutton sandwiches, <laughs> and I would fish out a, uh, a deck of tarot cards. And this is kind of a nervous tick of mine that I would just be uh, absentmindedly shuffling them and fiddling with them during my travels. Uh, and after I eat my fill of breakfast, I will actually... Uh, lay out our fortune in the cards. And the uh, one question that I will ask uh, the fates here is, do the rumors of the undead in the forest hold truth? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, now I have to make an intellect roll. Okay, so I got a seven. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so... In that case, uh, you will fail because that's below 10. Right. Okay. I'm just trying to read this here. You have one bane for the roll for each time you cast the spell. So if you were to cast it multiple times in a day, that roll gets harder and harder. Gotcha. Oh, so I have one insanity now. Huzzah. Yes. Yeah, so you gain one insanity and you can't cast the spell again uh, until you've rested. What'd you learn? Well, I, I, am, I am definitely uh, a little bit rattled here, and you guys see me... Uh, shuffle the cards up and kind of hurriedly put them away back in my bag. And oh, oh, mm. well, uh, if we're gonna head out, we should head out. It's probably gonna be more dangerous than we thought. So, so I'm gonna climb you like a tree to get in your face and be like, "What'd you learn?" Yeah, and, and what what rattled you um, was not so much learning that there is unquiet dead out in these woods because um, that's you know all part of the adventuring profession. But in fact. As you asked that question, just fleetingly you saw a glimpse of the fires and tortures of hell, giving you a sense that perhaps not just are there undead, but there's actually a, uh, a devilish influence at work here. Um, and seeing, seeing that scene uh, has scarred your mind ever so slightly. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will, uh, I will shove the halfling off of my face uh, back to the table. It's... Uh... We're probably going to have a fight or two. Good. I'm in a bad mood. Good. You fight better when you're angry. I'm always angry. Ah, I'm always uh, hungry. Will there be crunchy treats there? Why didn't you ask about crunchy treats? I, I ignore the goblin because I'm sick you of the question. the wrong questions. <laughs> so, so anything we, else you guys want to do here in town before you set out? Um, do we need any supplies? Do they have a, an abundant source of holy water? Uh, they do not, because this is a tiny little crap hole fishing town. Uh, but there is there is a small uh, temple of the new god um, where you may be able to get something like that. Um, quick aside about religion in the world of Shadow of the Demon Lord. Um, there is no proof that any of the gods exist, because all magic is essentially coming from the same source. Um, the way that's expressed in the game is that as a uh, magician or priest or any other spellcasting path, you all have access to the same spells. Um, there's no distinction made between arcane and divine magic. Um, so it is possible that a priest might be petitioning his god for spells and receiving them as a, as a blessing. Or it's possible um, that he is tapping into the same source of magic as everybody else and just thinks it's coming from a god. 
Um, no real way to tell. Um, but um, in terms of religion, there are two kind of core religions uh, out in the world. There's the old faith, which tends to be made up of gods of uh, nature, primal gods, gods of battle, and that kind of thing. Um, and then there is the new god, uh, the Church of the New God, which was founded a few hundred years ago by a prophetess named Astrid, um, who had sort of a vision of a monotheistic religion. And there's sort of an Old Testament, New Testament thing where um, followers of the new god it's to them. It's sort of built on the old faith. So they're they disagree on a lot of things, but they're not in opposition with each other. Um, but there is an arm of the Church of the New God known as the Inquisition, uh, which is dedicated to rooting out evil. Um, they tend to fight a lot of undead and that kind of thing, uh, combat devils and demons where they pop up, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, as Inquisitions go, they can sometimes get overzealous and go too far. But to sort of the average person, uh, the Inquisition is a very good thing. Well, I don't know about you, Lot, but. Uh... I think a prayer or two might be wise before we head off to our deaths, and I will stand up and, and stump on over to the temple. <laughs> yeah, so you, you head over to the temple, and you see that you immediately get the impression that uh, if the townsfolk here in Boz follow any particular religion, it's not this one. Um, probably as fisher folk, uh, people who kind of live by the sea, they're much more attuned to sort of the, na the nature and storm gods of the old faith. Um, so this Church of the New God is uh, a wooden building that looks like it's seen better days. Uh, it was maybe a repurposed house or something um, that got turned into this temple. Um, and as you go in, um, it's sort of dimly lit in there, and you can see that there's one old man sitting on a small wooden stool in front of a little altar, uh, and otherwise it is empty. And he sort of creakily looks up at you as you enter and says, uh, What? Uh, who, who are you? I'm just a simple adventurer, and I'm seeking the new god's blessing for my current venture. Ah, what, what are you doing that you want this blessing? Uh, my friends and I are, are heading off through the woods to the lighthouse to investigate why the light has gone out. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yes, uh, I would do it myself, you understand, but uh, these, these old bones just aren't quite what they used to be. Uh, but yeah, yes, of course. Come here, come here, my son. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go forward and strike a a a posture of prayer and supposition. And I will be behind the priest where he can't see me, making obscene gestures the whole time. <laughs> he doesn't seem to notice you. Um, but yeah, so you you kneel before this old man, and he sort of does a whole thing and lays hands on your head um, and mutters something underneath his breath that sounds like some sort of benediction and he says uh, rise, rise my son and go forth and do good works in the name of the new god uh, so I'll just be, like I'm in the back, I don't necessarily believe in any of the religion but I'll wait for like the appropriate time when the priest says his, uh, his thing and uh, I'll use like a minor magical trick to make all of the candles in the room like glow very brightly as if okay. uh, you know, his prayers were responded to. Yeah, yeah. So when, when that happens, uh, you see that his eyes actually widen in surprise, um, and he sort of looks around in almost momentary panic um, and then sort of settles down again and, and says, uh, Yes, yes, uh, of course, of course. Clearly the new god smiles upon your venture. <laughs> Very good, yes. Many thanks, Padre. I appreciate it. And I'll, I'll look back at Taryn and just roll my eyes because I can recognize his magic. <laughs> You've seen this trick before. Oh, absolutely. I would be willing to say that we have had cantrip contests uh, <laughs> when we were really, really bored, and we were just prestidigitizing back and forth to see who could do the goofiest thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure the last score was 6-3 was to Taryn, so i, I got to catch up. <laughs> well... If uh, if this old man were the judge of your contest, uh, Taron would definitely be winning because he's very impressed, uh, and of course has no idea that you were the one who did it. But he is uh, seems convinced that the new god has smiled upon him. I, I will pat the the priest on the head as I walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you head out and you can hear him uh, muttering quietly to himself about miracles not seen since his boyhood days.
Uh, so I will uh, shoulder my backpack, make sure I have my weapons, and look at my uh, fellow adventurers. Well, gents. What are you looking at? You dummy. Should we go? Yeah, of course. Just waiting for my horse to turn around and go the right way. Go, horse, go! Shut up. So I have like a little, almost like a repelling harness, and uh, I hook myself to Tarvis's back, and he doesn't even realize I'm there, so I'm actually <laughs> riding him also. Yeah, so you're, you're dangling right below, uh, like, where the goblin's feet are kind of sticking down from the backpack. Uh, I'm not sure at what point I became Fezzik, but I'm totally <laughs> okay with that. You are the brute squad. <laughs> Everybody out of the way! <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm going to shout that. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> Everybody move! Everybody move! Adventurers coming through! Yeah, the, the two, like, fishwives who are standing by the well as you head by just kind of give you the stink eye, like, ugh, adventurers. Yeah, you liked it, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say a little too loud. It smells like fish. <laughs> One of them yells back, everything smells like fish here! <laughs> All right, let's head off to the okay, forest. Okay, we're in a we're in a Mel Brooks movie now. <laughs> let's head off to the forest before this gets too bad, too much work. <laughs> All right, so you head southward out of town into the forest. Um, as a uh, as a fishing town, they haven't really bothered to clear many fields for farms or anything like that. And so, really, the forest butts up right against where the town ends. Um, there are some houses that are probably spitting distance uh, from from the uh, first trees of the forest. And true to uh, its description the night before, um, it is a, a fairly imposing-looking forest. It's definitely sort of old growth, um, very dark and heavy, a lot of big trees. So as, as you pass through the tree line into the forest, it immediately gets much darker. And uh, you find yourselves walking through uh, a couple inches of sort of uh, dead, rotten foliage and that kind of thing, um, sort of a, a soft loam beneath your feet. And uh, there is, a path is too strong a word for it, but there is sort of a clear uh, space that at some point, probably a generation ago, somebody cleared away through the forest that heads in the general direction of the lighthouse. Um, so you find yourselves sticking to that, um, since it seems to be going the way you want to be going. And you travel for a couple of hours, at, uh, at which point, um, you hear uh, sort of ahead of you and off to the side um, some sort of rustling sound coming from the trees, and anybody is welcome to make a perception roll. Um, that should be on your character sheet on the left hand right below your attributes. Um, works the same way as anything else. Roll, uh, roll d20, add your modifier, and you're trying to hit a 10 or better. I heartily fail. Excellent. You have found your shoes. Uh, I got a 12. I got... Ten on the nose. All right. So the two of you spot out in the in the darkness of the trees, uh, maybe twenty yards away. You spot uh, what look like eyes looking out at you. Um, they are sort of shining in the in the faint light of uh, the sun that's able to break through the tree cover, um, and they're they're low to the ground. It looks like probably at animal height, and they're there. They seem to be watching you. They seem to be watching you carefully, but not necessarily coming any closer. Well, I didn't see that, so I'm still walking ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you a little tap in the nethers so that you uh, you know to stop, and I'll yeah. point them out. Uh, I will use uh, Create Flame to see if I can generate a little light to see if we can better see what is back there. Yeah, sure. So you, um, you create a little ball of flame. Um, and it cuts through the murky gloom of this forest somewhat. Um, and you can clearly see in the light of the flame, there are six pairs of eyes looking out at you. They all look to be, as I said, sort of at, at animal height. Um, so you think probably you're dealing with wolves or some other animal like that. And they seem to back away a little bit uh, when the flame comes out, um, but not very far. Hmm. Hmm. Looks like we have wolves in the shadows. They might not attack. I suggest we move forward cautiously. Cautiously is right. Wolves are much bigger than me. Everything's bigger than you. <laughs> That's true. It's all <laughs> terrifying. I'll stay in the back of the group as we move away and like keep a flame burning 
in the back of the group, so to try to hold off the wolves following us. Okay. Yeah, so you, you move cautiously down the road, um, and the wolves seem to kind of pace you for a while. Um, they're staying to the shadows of the forest, but they never really approach, and you think that they are afraid of that fire. Does anybody have any kind of profession that uh, includes animal handling or animal training, anything like that? I do. I'm used to an- handling animals smaller than me, but I do. Um, so give me an intellect roll. Or actually, you know, you don't even you don't even do roll for it. This would be common knowledge. Um, you know that it is is strange for wolves to be out at this time of day. I mean, it's high morning at this point. Even in the dimness of the forest, um, it's unnatural for wolves to be out and about. Why are the wolves out this early? That's so strange. What would compel them out here? I wonder if they're unliving wolves. I point out that he kind of smells of fish. <laughs> it's not me, you idiot. Might be the horse. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely concerning, but they're not moving to attack us at this point. So I say as long as we move cautiously, and uh, Taryn, as long as you keep that fire spell up, we should at least be aware of what's happening. I mean, if they rush us, they rush us, and we'll we'll do our best. All right, so you keep moving forward cautiously for a while. Uh, the wolves are pacing you, but not moving threateningly towards you um, any further than that. And eventually it does seem like they actually just sort of give up. Um, if they were hungry, they weren't that hungry. And so at some point you sort of realize that they uh, slunk away quietly back into the woods. As I no longer see the wolves, I, uh, as I always do, I toss my, uh, my flame ball to uh, Noveth. Just close enough to sizzle his whiskers, but not enough to actually hurt him. Ah, 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 my whiskers, my whiskers. <laughs> Why must you torment me so? I'm never pointing out a trap to you again. <laughs> um, but uh, even as you do that, um, you see a shape rising from uh, the path in front of you, um, and it is a clearly sort of a ghostly apparition that seems to come up almost just directly out of the ground. It's sort of a semi-translucent and uh, pale, and you can see there are sort of streamers of almost like fog coming off of this shape. Um, and a chill comes over all of you, and if you would all please give me willpower rolls. Well, before that, I want to turn and look at Taryn and say, is this you? Uh, this isn't me. I haven't, uh, I haven't mastered the undead yet. Fudge. Neither have I. I got a three. Yeah, I got a five. <laughs> yeah, I got a three as well. All right. Um, anybody who failed that willpower roll, so anybody who got less than ten, you gain one insanity uh, from seeing this horrible apparition rise up as if out of nowhere. And uh, you are frightened uh, for one round. And so frightened is a condition um, that basically just means that you're going to have a bane to all of your rolls for this round. Is the apparition moving towards us, or is it just hovering there? Um, It is moving towards you. um, And even as you watch, um, its face sort of opens up like what was once probably... uh, looks like an elven face, actually. Its mouth sort of starts opening and then keeps opening farther and farther than any mouth really ought to, uh, revealing just huge, long, like, seven-inch long pointed teeth. Um, And it is coming for you guys. So this is a good spot to uh, ask who wants to go on a fast turn. Um, So it's probably about five yards ahead of you. Oh, yeah, regarding yards. um, So on your character sheet, you're going to have a uh, notation for speed. Speed is measured in yards. If we were playing with grid and minis and stuff, it would be one square per yard, so your speed would also be your squares. But in this case, since we're kind of just doing things theater of the mind style, you know, it's it's a little rougher. But, uh, yeah, your speed is in yards, um, so that is the maximum speed that you could move if you use just a regular move. There are options for uh, moving farther. Um, on a slow turn, you could move and then use your action action to do a run and move twice your speed additionally. Uh, so you could move up to three times your speed if you really wanted to. But, uh, yeah, the this apparition seems to be about five yards away from you, um, and it is definitely coming towards you. So anybody so, who wants to go on a fast turn. 
Uh, a quick question for like sure. the attacks. Like uh, I have a longbow. Like what's the range on range weapons? Uh, longbow has a long range, which means I think a hundred yards. So he's easily okay. within range of okay. you. Yeah, five five yards uh, is going to be close range. So any kind of ranged attacks, you're going to have no trouble. Okay. And I have a reach of two, so I will definitely step up and take a swing. Not getting cool. super close to him, taking uh, well advantage of my reach, so I'm not right up next to him. Yeah, absolutely. So as as you, I think, have already figured out, um, that just means that you can be a yard away from somebody and still be able to attack them. Um, right. You are a gym, and so you are big. So if you wanted to, so if he's uh, about five yards away, um, in order to close and attack, you would have to wait till a slow turn if you wanted to move and then use your action to attack. Uh, or you could just charge. Basically lets you uh, move and then attack at the end of the move, but you would have a, uh, a bane to that attack. Mm. And I already have one bane on me because I'm frightened. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know what? I will then uh, instead choose to set myself with my shield and actually try to draw the ghost's attention to me okay. and uh, attra attract the attack and let my friends set up for success. Okay. Are you going to yell anything taunting at him or anything like that or just kind of ready yourself? Uh, I will yell incredibly offensive things in trollish language. Okay. It does not seem to understand the words you are saying, but it probably gets the message. Other fast turns. Uh, Thorne doesn't understand the words either, but he appreciates the sentiment. So even though I don't know exactly what he's saying, I still, he brings a smile to my lips. <laughs> So Thorn did pass his his fright check, um, okay. but what I want to do, I think I have to do slow turn because I, I want to unhook my fast release uh, harness so I'm no longer attached to uh, uh, Tarvis. But I just want to step forward enough to get in front. I don't actually want to attack. I want to take up like a position in front of the group with my sword out, but I think all of that probably would be a slow turn. I, I would let you do it on a fast turn, um, and that's actually, there's one more small rules thing for sort of the action economy that we should cover, which is um, little things like unhooking yourself from Yotin's backpack or um, opening a door, uh, pulling out a potion from your bag, that kind of thing. Those, it just costs half your movement to do it. So you could unhook yourself and, and drop to the ground. That would take up half your movement, and then you'd still have the other half of your movement to uh, get up to the front if you wanted. Okay, so I guess what I'll do then is I will uh, I'll unharness myself and I'll drop the foot and a half or two foot whatever the distance is, kind of kind of into a roll. Okay. So that I pop up in front of him with my sword out, you know, sort of waving it like Zorro and beckoning him, the ghost to come forward because I'm wholly unimpressed with it. Okay. Anybody else want to go on a fast turn? No, Bax uh, is too scared to go on a fast turn. Uh, Tarn will go. He will uh, draw his longbow and. Uh, Try to fire at him from here. Okay. So, so you were rolling. So my attacks d twenty against plus one against his defense. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and did you uh, make your uh, willpower roll? Uh, yeah, I failed. So I have insanity. So one boon. Yeah. So you'll so have uh, one bane on that roll. So bane, it'll be twenty yeah. plus one, and then roll a d six and subtract it. Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, one so. plus one minus two. I get a zero. <laughs> yeah, so I think you end up at a zero. <laughs> Actually, um, yeah. So you you are uh, just pants wet and fire the bow backwards. Yeah. So you you are just so shaken that uh, you can't even quite load your bow right, and the arrow just plunks to the ground in front of you in a super embarrassing way. <laughs> um, I, should, I should say that uh, natural ones are not automatic misses. Obviously, they'll usually be low enough that you're going to miss, but there's no auto miss or fumble or anything like that on a natural one. On a natural 20, uh, you most paths will have something that happens, uh, especially for them. I think magicians don't, but all the other paths do. Uh, if you roll a natural 20, something great will happen to you, um, but it depends on what path you take. Yeah, a lot of my spells have additional stuff that happens. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I think so. They're they're wrapped into the spells and other paths. Uh, they just have kind of universal stuff that they get. So, anyway, um, yeah. So you uh, embarrass yourself in front of your friends. All right. Um, so at this point, we would do monster fast turns. Uh, but since it's still a couple yards away, it's actually going to wait till slow turns, uh, so it can move up and attack somebody. Um, so that means that we are into player slow turns. 
Um, so anybody who is waiting to move and attack, now would be your time. Well, that's me, so I will go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, and I still have a Bane on this? Uh, yeah, for being frightened, yep. Until gotcha. the end of this round. Oh, so I got a 3 on my Bane, so that knocks out my bonus. <laughs> and I got a 3 on the D20 roll. So <laughs> whiff again. Yeah, so you, uh, much like your frightened companion, you embarrass <laughs> yourself. And <laughs> you're, you've got a Morningstar, is that right? Yep. Yeah, so the morning star, you're swinging it around trying to look like a badass, and it gets stuck in, like, some leaves and crud beneath your feet, um, and you just kind of stumble over it. No Baxt! No Baxt hasn't gone! And uh, seeing how terribly all of my allies have done against the big, terrifying, horrifying, no good, very bad thing, No Baxt is going to jump away, run and hide! Run and hide! Okay. Run and hide! Live to fight another day! I have a bane on that because I'm frightened. I have a boon on that because I am sneaky, so that washes. Mm -hmm. And I get a 10 on the die, plus 2 for my agility, I believe. All right, yeah, so you, you sort of duck off the path into, uh, into the tree line, um, and you hide yourself behind a tree. Good luck, everybody! <laughs> You're screwed. Um, has everybody taken a turn either fast or slow? I think everybody's gone. All right, so that means that it is his slow turn. Um, so I think the halfling is closest, right? You're up front. Well, I was, but then um, Tarvis stepped over me to, to close an attack. That's true. So you're kind of both... That's true, actually, yeah. So he, he moved up to the attack, so they're a bit ahead of everybody. Okay, so um, he is going to go for Tarvis in that case. Um, so that's going to be a uh, 13 against your defense, Harvest. That will miss. I have a defense of 16. All right. So, yeah, he, he comes at you uh, with a sort of shadowy spectral sword. Um, as it slices within a couple inches of your face, uh, you definitely get the impression that it looks like it was probably of elven make. Um, but luckily you don't, get to, you don't get to find out anything more than that because it passes by you constantly. So with that, we are at end of round. Things that happen at end of round, if somebody were bleeding to death, we would roll to see what happens to them. Um, if you drink a potion, it doesn't take effect until the end of the round. Um, important to note, in case you ever drink a healing potion, uh, you wouldn't get that health back immediately, right? It would wait until the end of the round. And occasionally some other powers and that kind of stuff will happen then. Uh, but nothing this time, so we're back around to the top two fast turns. All right, well... Um... Thorn wants to call out to Nobox, like, yeah, good job, you fought the wolves, so we don't have to worry about them. <laughs> I'm then going to smack Tarvis in the butt with my saber because he's being a doofus, and then I will step forward and attack the uh, the ghost, yelling uh, insults as well, that, uh, you know, you were prettier when you were alive, but I like you better that you're dead, and you can suck my halfling, you know, all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> he looks very offended. He should. All right, so I get a boon whenever I make an attack roll because I'm awesome. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> so that's a nine. Uh, nine is not going to do it. No. Yeah, you uh, you slash for it, and it just wasn't even where you thought it was. All right, I'm going to yell at Tarvis, get out of my way, as if it was his fault. <laughs> uh, 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 Tarn will do a fast uh, as well. He's going to pick the arrow up that uh, is only like a few feet in front of him. <laughs> Try to re-fire. Uh, was the did the bane carry over? Or was it just that? Uh, oh fight? yeah. So anybody who had that bane from being frightened, that is now gone because we're into a new round. Yeah. So that you shook off your your fright at the end of the round. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. So I got a thirteen. Uh, thirteen. So you put the arrow in exactly the right place, uh, but it seems to just pass through this thing harmlessly anyway. Uh, Tarvis will also take a fast action this turn, attacking. Okay. And uh, 19. Yeah, so you are finally able to land a blow, and, and the sense that you get is that this thing is sort of uh, flickering in and out of its connection to this world. Um, and so you're able to time your blow just so that you catch it on the upswing uh, when it's kind of a little more solid. Um, and uh, you slam it with your morning star, roll the damage. Uh, I have a 6 for damage. All right, very nice. Yeah, so you, you deal it a mighty blow. Um, it is not bested, but it definitely looks like it did not like that very much. That's right, ghosty. So I think that's everybody but the goblin. Goblin's going on the slow turn. All right. 
In that case, um, this phantom is going to take a fast turn because it's right up against Tarvis, who just taught it the meaning of pain. Uh, so it's going for you again. Um, and actually got a natural 20. Luckily for you, it doesn't have anything to keys off of that, but it definitely is going to hit you. And this is going to hurt for five damage. Lovely. So that brings us to slow turns. Oh, goody, goody. I mean, ah, ah, the, there's there's wolves in the woods. There's wolves. Ah, oh, God, no. I uh, come come very uh, stealthily, apparently, despite all the screaming, uh, out <laughs> of the woods and, and try and stab the horrible, invisible, visible monstrosity from another world in the back. Okay. I get a one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are bringing the thunder today, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, all the all the shouting and panicking uh, did not give you a good setup for your attack, uh, and the uh, the edge of your weapon just sticks in the ground. Ah, oh no! No, we're all gonna die! We're all gonna die! <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So that brings us to the end of round, and we're back around to fast turns. I'll take another swing since I'm right there. All right. Capitalizing on the success. Of my last turn, uh, sixteen. Uh, sixteen will hit it. Yeah, you are. Uh, you're finding your rhythm. Ah, only four damage though. Can't all be winners. Yeah, so you deal it another mighty blow, and it is definitely focused on you now. It does not like you. I'll go again as well. So I'm gonna step up. Uh, get again. Say something offensive. Okay. And I get an eighteen this time. Nice. Yeah, that'll do it. For seven points of damage. Ooh, nice. Damn, there we go. Wow. Yeah, suddenly it turns on you, uh, and its features become even more horrible as it turns on you in rage and pain, uh, having never taken such damage in its life. All right, I'm going to give him a duck face and a wink. (laughs) It does not like that. That is the most offensive thing of all. (laughs) Mental note, ghosts don't like selfies. (laughs) (laughs) No Baxt, no Baxt, take a swing. No Baxt, get it this time. No Baxt got uh, better than 10, 14. Um, and don't forget, you uh, have your trickery, your rogue trickery, which uh, you can use to give yourself a boon. Ooh, boon for the roll. All right, that's uh, four higher. All right, that'll definitely do it. Speak. Give me damage. All right. Hey, max damage, seven right. points. Ah, ah, ah. All right, uh, what kind of weapon are you using? No backs to use rapier. All right, yeah. So no you uh, rapier treat him very well in the high seas. You wait until uh, you can just see sort of its ghostly heart uh, become a little more solidified as it's sort of flickering in and out of existence. And when that heart appears, you go into a perfect lunge that would have made your fencing master proud. And you put the point of your rapier directly through its heart, and with a horrible shriek that echoes throughout the forest, it, it dissipates into fog. No backs think you guys need to pull your weight. Good job, little buddy. And just like that, an eerie silence falls over the forest. I'm going to look back over at Terror and be like, uh, good job with the covering fire there, Chief. Uh, so I've got... <laughs> my intention was to go in the slow turn and use my uh, flames. I'm sitting there holding another ball of fire that I like. <laughs> uh, of course, toss so, over to Novax. You're standing there with your balls in your hand, yeah. as usual, like while it. the rest of us do something. Exactly. Ah, ah, no backs, no like, ball of fire. No like. Oh, well, that was, uh, that was surprising. I didn't expect ghosts. What? Didn't you say this morning we were going to see ghosts? Just remember, we're getting free sandwiches for this, guys. That's true. <laughs> All right. For the sandwiches. Throwing crunchy fish. Forward for sandwiches. So, uh, Tarvis, just a note on healing, since you uh, might feel like you need it. Um, everybody should have a healing potion or two. Drinking a healing potion uh, will give you back your healing rate. Um, it's marked on your sheet, but just uh, for information's sake, healing rate is always one quarter of your total health uh, rounded down. Um, so drinking a healing potion will give you that back. Uh, there's also an action that anybody can take uh, once per day. It's called Catch Your Breath, and it will also give you your healing rate back. Um, so generally, um, since drinking a potion, uh, in, in combat wouldn't happen until the end of the round, generally you want to, you know, use your potions outside of combat, uh, and save your catch your breath until you're actually in combat, but there's no reason you couldn't use it now as well. You okay, big guy? Yeah, give me a second. 
I'll, I'm going to drink my potion because that was a third of my health that I took. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'll uh, I'll fish out my healing potion, pop the cork, down it. Ooh, all right, feeling better. Let's go. Hey, uh, no boxed. Why don't you uh, walk for a little bit and let Tarvis catch his breath? Okay, okay, that's fair. After all, I hero. Yeah, yeah, don't let it go to your little green head. I'm still going to harness myself to him. I'm just going <laughs> to right. no box it right <laughs> It wouldn't do to be walking around on your own two feet or anything. Exactly, no. I mean, screw that. All right. So, uh, unless there's anything else you want to do, you can continue through the forest. Nobax, scout ahead. Nobax, be invisible, stealthy as the wind. All right. Um, give, yeah, give me uh, an agility roll to be all sneaky-like. Well, that was a four on the die, but to be mm. sneaky, I get a, a boon, and I rolled a six on that, plus my agility ends up in a better than a ten. All right, there you go. Yeah, so you feel very sneaky as you sneak through the forest. And you kind of uh, sneak ahead for a few yards. You're moving through the trees, kind of keeping your eyes peeled, trying to see if there's anything, you know, out there in the forest waiting for you. You see, peering out of the trees on the on the path ahead, you see three uh, humanoid shapes, um, one of them about your size, um, one of them is uh, about human size, and one of them is a bit larger. And you're sort of, you pause for a moment to take this in, and then you realize that you're looking at the others in your own party. And so you suddenly get this feeling like somehow you got turned around. No backs confused. No backs hide. Make sure they smell like party. Um, yeah, so you, you sniff the air, and it definitely smells like your party. And, and they sound like party? Horse sound like horse? Yeah, the horse sounds like the horse. You hear him whinnying up ahead. Do they sound like party from behind? I, I sneak around them. If, if they're up ahead, I'm, I'm going to oh, try okay. and sneak around them and get from behind them, but in front of me. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you sneak around, and yeah, from, from all vantage points, they look and sound and smell like the party you've been traveling with. Just somehow you must have just gotten turned around. You thought you were going forward and you were going backwards or something. Novax never admit defeat and never admit getting lost. Novax, try again. So I sneak ahead of them again without telling them about the uh, crazy interdimensional mirror that I probably hit. <laughs> yeah, so you start this, sneaking This time I, 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 I do double check my compass from my sailor experience to make sure that I'm, I'm facing the way I want and keep an eye on it as I go this time. Yeah, okay, absolutely. So how not get lost. You keep your compass in front of you, and you had been heading sort of southwest along the coast, um, and the compass says southwest, 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 and then suddenly it flips around, and you're walking northeast, and you see your party in front of you again. I'll back say, stop! Stop! Compass rolls point all directions. This must be North Pole. No backs to find North Pole. Very exciting. Wait, wait, what's happening? I'm so I'm confused. <laughs> I, I take time to show everyone the compass and the fact that when I move over, it turns the compass needle backward. This must be North Pole. North Pole where, where, where a compass point all directions at once. Um, when, you, when you try to show it to them, um, it doesn't seem to be happening now. Oh, now we're just moving forward like normal? Yeah, assu assuming uh, you're kind of bringing everybody up with you, right? To mm -hmm. show them this weird thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it seems like you're just heading forward as normal. No Bax uh, takes a long, stern moment with his compass, shaking it and staring at it quizzically. It just no worked, Bax. I swear. No Bax, where did you get real ale? <laughs> no Bax, Your not compass. drink ale. It's compass. Your compass right, has no uh, excuse me. It has nothing to say for itself. No, no Bax scout back of the party. I scout that way, and I point behind them and go that direction. But we don't... Uh... <sighs> Never mind. So you start scouting uh, in that direction. Uh, so you're heading sort of uh, northeast back up the path. And are you moving through the forest or are you staying on the path? What are you doing? Uh, I, th I think I'm moving through the, the forest just uh, a few feet in. I, I, I want to be able to see what's on the path, but I don't want to be seen by what's on the path. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so you, uh, you start moving back along the far uh, back through the forest, it's kind of the way you came, um, and suddenly you find yourself yourself staring at the backs of your party members. And I didn't get any closer to them, I just turned around, right? Yeah, just at some point you must have just gotten turned around. 
So can, can I pinpoint the exact point I turn around? Can I put my hand through the portal and, like, pick my own <laughs> nose with it or something? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so you, you, after a little bit of sort of like hopping back and forth, um, you seem to find there there does seem to be a particular kind of plane that when you pass through it, suddenly you just find yourself heading in the other direction. Um, and it's not so much a portal that you could, you know, stick a hand through and grab yourself on the butt. Rather, it's just when you cross this plane, just something kind of gets muddled in your head and suddenly you're going in the other direction. Hmm. Very mysterious. Very mysterious. Must tell to my friends. Wizards know what to. So is this I, something that's in front of us or behind us? It is It is now behind the rest of the party. You seem to have all gone through it with no problem. I think it's the, the path. If you go off the path at all, you get screwed. So as long as we're on the path, we should be okay. I, I think it's fear following you guys. I think one of you carrying object, that means none of us can get away from you. It keeps us back to you. No good. Very mysterious. I, I choose to ignore the goblin, because that sounds crazy. <laughs> uh, you ate sandwich! With poison magical sandwich! Magical sandwich make you into inescapable horror being! <laughs> it's a trick! Uh, Wench's trick! Yeah, I don't, be- I don't believe the goblin either, but I will, uh, just to uh, show him that he's wrong, I will walk away from the party in that direction, and then move to, you know, as far, you know, as far away as he thought that it took. Okay. Um, are you going out into the forest with him, or? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go by myself. Okay. Yeah. So you you go out into the into the spot in the forest uh, where he told you this was happening, and yeah, you do are surprised to find that suddenly you're looking back at your party where a moment ago you've been walking away from them. Interesting. Well, so, after a while that he's gone, I convince everybody to walk about um, you know half a league further up the road in the opposite direction that he went. I really want to see if it drags him along with us. <laughs> it's like those old side side scroller video games. He just he has yep, to come yep. with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're all on the same little screen, right? We 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 gotta drag this guy out the back end. <laughs> I think we should all run in four different directions and see if we're suddenly running at each other. That'd be kind of awesome. Well, then four different wolves will eat our faces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I very much vote for staying together on the path. <laughs> well. Uh, the rest of you head about half a league up the path. Um, nothing super interesting seems to happen, um, and you can just barely make out uh, the figure of your friend a little ways away, sort of uh, tromping through the forest confusedly. Uh, so you have been dragged any closer. But uh, Taryn, give me an intellect roll. Uh, Fourteen. All right, so you actually, as you sort of are examining this, uh, something comes back to you from your uh, your little bit of magical training, um, and you realize that this is most likely a uh, like a ward of some sort, um, of the type that a wizard would set up uh, if you wanted to keep people away. Okay. So it usually sort of marks the boundary of uh, what a wizard might consider his, his grounds, um, and is used to, you know, anybody who's trying to come uh, and bother him uh, would be, you know, find themselves suddenly heading in the opposite direction and hopefully uh, not even recognize it until they're far away again. So with my, uh, with my arcane uh, profession, would I know what the typical way of getting around such a trap or wall? Yeah, so, so in fact, you, you know, um, as the halfling surmised a few minutes ago, that usually there is sort of one safe path through something like this. Other than that, you would, it would probably be a battle of you know wizard versus wizard trying to dispel his magic. Okay, so I will uh, I'll head back to the group and uh, relay to them kind of what I've discerned from the from the war. Well, since we both have the Arcanist background, we both know a little bit about magic, so I'll know what he's talking about. Yeah, uh, when he explains it. Um, yeah, and that, that sounds right to you based on sort of the descriptions you've been given and, and your training and stuff. You're like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Can we can we assume that if we stay on the path, we'll be okay? That would be your best guess, yeah. Do we know anything about the wizard that kept the lighthouse? I mean, he, he was the grandfather of the waitress? or Yeah, yeah. So um, as far as you know, everybody that you kind of talk to, obviously his granddaughter, but everybody else that you kind of talk to in town... Uh, last night, um, everybody seems to love him. He's, you know, he generally keeps himself up in the tower and stuff, but uh, he's got a good reputation. He's kind of a friendly old man. 
and they all love him because, of course, he's the one who's always kept the lighthouse running for as long as anybody can remember. And uh, so they just say, oh, yeah, he stays up in the lighthouse and keeps it running and keeps our keeps our boats from crashing and keeps us safe and keeps this town going. So everybody generally loves him. Was the waitress a uh, human or elf? Or, I, uh, she was human. Human? Okay. Mm-hmm. And the wizard is described as human as well? Like... Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so well, I, this... I, Tavern and I would talk about this, and, you know, if, you know, if we're familiar with this idea, we'd probably you know, yeah. stay on the path. I'm trying to debate whether this is related to what we're doing or this might be a side thing. It could it could be that anyone trying to get to the lighthouse sneaking through the forest would get distracted and sent away, forcing them to stay on the path, which would possibly make them an easier target. Or maybe he knew the lighthouse was under some kind of siege and he's put this up as a defense mechanism. True, true. Monsters would probably come through the forest. The undead might be, you know, fooled by such a trap. True. I still vote for for forging ahead. I I don't I don't yeah. think we have another course of action at this point. Yeah. I think that we since we, you know, intellectually understand what's going on, we could probably figure out a way or, you know, to follow the path. Yeah. Yeah, let's stick on the path. Let's keep going. All right. So you stick to the path. And in fact, you find um, that not too long after investigating this uh, this mystery, um, as uh, it's just about noon, um, you can barely see the sun high overhead through the tree cover. But you actually find that the path lets out into a uh, sort of clearing that's actually right at the edge of uh, of the land here, where it sort of falls away in a short cliff down to the sea and down. Sort of there's sort of a sloping grass kind of lee. Uh, leading down into a rocky outcropping that juts out into the sea. And at the tip of that rocky outcropping, you can see the lighthouse that you've come seeking. Thanks for attending the RPG Academy and listening to our podcast. We do this out of love for the hobby and for you, our fans. This podcast and site content will always be free for you to enjoy and utilize. But we do have expenses related to the show. If you'd like to help out in any way, please visit patreon.com slash the RPG Academy and check out the rewards we are providing for your monthly pledges. We will use all funds that come in to improve the show and give you better content and quality. And if you don't have the coin to spend, don't worry. You can still help us out in numerous ways. One, you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, or you can leave us a five-star review on iTunes or on Stitcher Radio. Also, if you clear your cookies and then visit Amazon or drive through RPG through our portal, we get a kickback from your orders and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Just like an RPG, our site works best with open lines of communication. We love talking with our listeners about everything. Please contact us with any questions, concerns, and comments you have. We also love to hear feedback and experiences from your own games. You can email us via podcast at vrpgacademy.com, or you can reach us on social media such as Facebook and Google+. We are there under the RPG Academy. But Twitter is usually the fastest way to reach us. You can find my favorite co-host, Caleb G, at the Caleb G. And you can find my favorite co-host, Michael, at the RPG Academy. Thanks for listening. And as always, if you're having fun, you're doing it right.